In my previous video, link in the description, I introduce you to the basics of logic and why we need PLCs in industry. In this video, I'm going to discuss the infrastructure and different types of hardware you'll find in a PLC system. PLCs generally consist of the following subsystems. The I.O. or inputs outputs. This is where our different field devices, such as switches and transmitters for the inputs, solenoids, control valves and switched outputs for the outputs, are connected to the PLC. Processors. Depending on the system, the PLC will have at least a single processor or sometimes up to three separate processors in safety applications. The processor runs the software that will control the outputs dependent on the system inputs as well as the program software. PLCs will have some form of comms interface. These comms cards may be USB, serial or RJ45 connectors for Ethernet connections. Comms cards will have two main purposes. They will allow interface to a laptop or server that can be used to program the software within the PLC. Comms cards can also be used to connect with DCS or SCADA for remote visibility and control, as well as other remote I.O. stations. Power supplies. PLCs will have an AC or DC power supply that is needed to provide the components and I.O. with power. Depending on the duty, the systems you will find may be dual redundant, power supplies, as well as redundancy devices. PLCs for small I.O. counts are often all-in-one devices. A common example is a Siemens logo. These are ideal for small detection systems or pump control. The downfall is they have very limited I.O. and no redundant systems. In more complex systems, PLCs are usually mounted within their own control cabinets. For these customizable systems, you will often have a backplane that allows a modular approach to system design. The backplanes will be able to accept the processor and then any other modules that will be required for the system, such as comms cards and I.O. devices. Systems are usually specified with enough spare I.O. for further and future expansion. Dual redundant systems. For Safety applications, you will frequently find dual redundant systems. You may have two sets of processor and I.O. cards that are both supporting the system. You may also have dual processors, but simplex or single I.O. counts. It all depends on your specific system requirements. It's worth mentioning here about remote I.O. infrastructure. In a standard I.O. configuration, we need to bring all our field device wiring back to a single point where the I.O. cards and processors are located. With remote I.O., we can have a set amount of I.O. in the field connected via short cable runs to field equipment within a specific area. We can then run comms cable from the remote I.O. to the main processor to carry that information. This vastly saves on the cost of multi-core cabling that might be needed in a standard setup. Hopefully, this has given you a brief overview of the different types of PLC architecture you're likely to come across. If you are enjoying this type of content, then please remember to like and subscribe for future content. Also, check out my website, instrumentationcontrol.info, where I'll put long-form and written articles about instrumentation and control topics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.